Hey hitchhikers, welcome back to another episode of Bag Lady Unloaded. I am Nick, the Poetic Nomad, and today we are talking about how judging affects your manifesting. So, how are you guys? Um, I had a really, really long week because last week was my first week back at the office since quarantine and... I catch the train to work and it was just not, wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy it at all. I actually got a little bit of reading done, which I'm okay with. I really liked it that. Why or how does judging affect your manifesting? So what is judging? Judging is when you make an assumption about someone based on nothing let's say somebody has something you want right within your immediate eye view this could be a person you know as well as a person you don't know and for whatever reason you turn around and say well you say something bad about them to make yourself feel better to give an example let's say that you're at a party right you're having fun you're drinking you're you know loose as a goose <laughs> and um all of a sudden uh, a hot guy or a hot girl walks in, depending on your identifying gender, right? You think to yourself, like, I bet they're stuck up or um, I bet they cheat, right? They're no good. So that's what a judgment is, right? But why do people do that? Why do people make judgments? People make judgments to feel better about themselves, right? Judgments usually come from a place of insecurities, um, or soft spots and we judge because in the moment for whatever reason we feel like we can't have what that person has and so we we judge them to make our to like lift ourselves back up so um in that specific case you didn't allow yourself to think it out loud but you probably thought like they look better than you or they're more attractive than you or they are more magnetic than you you know whatever it was and it kind of made you feel bad for a second even if you didn't realize it and then to climb back up the ladder you're like um but i'm better in some way at least i'm not stuck up at least i'm down to earth at least i'm not a cheater right so how can something like that keep you from manifesting so i'll give you an example okay <laughs> when i was 19 or like 19 or 20, right? I was, um, I moved 800 miles away from my family. I'm living in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I have my own apartment and I think I'm like the cat's meow, okay? And um, I have this boyfriend who is just like not as motivated as I was. Like we're both kids, but I was just like, um, I don't have any family and friends. I have to get it done because otherwise, where am I going to go? You know what I mean? If I only have myself to depend on. So, um, yeah, I kind of just, I was I was about my business. I was about my bag, okay? And so, um, yeah, he didn't want to help pay rent. He didn't want to help pay bills. He didn't want to buy food. And then he would give what little money he had, but he really didn't make an e make an effort to make more money, to make a bigger contribution. And um, even though I didn't say it at the time, um, or a lot of the times, I kind of resented him for that. Like, um, it's not fair. I got the apartment and you're just here playing the video game. You know, he was really into video games i think he still is and i'm over here you know working my ass off trying to provide a life that i want to have at you know 20 i had like a victoria's secret fetish and so i like needed victoria's secret everything like the hoodies and the the sweatpants and you know all of the fragrances and body washes and lotions and you know of course the underwear right and um yeah like i didn't really cook so i wanted to order pizza all the time and this guy just really didn't contribute to the lifestyle he was draining me if i if ever i wanted to go to the movies i had to pay for him to go with me right if we went out to eat i had to pay for him to eat if um you know his birthday pops up i'm like spoiling him and like buying him shoes and outfit and getting his hair cut and everything and then my birthday comes up and he doesn't even have um, a couple, he didn't even think to hold off a couple dollars to buy me a card, 
a freaking card. Happy birthday. I appreciate living in your house. Nothing. And, but, you know, I was young and I was also, even with all of that, I was very smitten by this guy. And um, I'd known him a long time, so I kind of just was like dealing with it, even though I didn't like it. So I had these two friends, um, one of them being um, someone who has always um, known her worth. And so guys would be like flying her out places and like she'd be getting trips and they were just like you know she would just get like to go on a shopping spree and all of these things and i was just like oh oh you know like why not me and then i had another friend who didn't date men who did like that sort of lavish thing for her like fly her out anywhere but she definitely had a guy who would um, get her hair done, you know, send her to the, to you know, to the uh, nail shop and um, get her nails and her toes done and take her, you know, he was just nice. He was he treated her right, basically. And I didn't have that at all. And so I had, like I said, these two friends having the exact opposite from what I was dealing with, and. I was kind of jealous, right? And so, I'm not jealous in a way that it affected our friendship, right? Um, but definitely, I was definitely wanting to have what they had. And I was scared to admit it because I felt like admitting it meant that I would either have to leave this guy and I really wasn't just ready to leave him yet. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I don't know why, guys. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, I just wasn't ready to leave him yet. And then also, it doesn't feel good to want something somebody else has, right? So for obvious reasons, I, I didn't say anything. But whenever I f started to feel that feeling, that familiar feeling of jealousy coming on to like push it down, I would um, say things like, it's okay because um, I'm an independent woman, right? I-N-D-E-P, no, just kidding. <laughs> I would just basically like try and lift myself up, right? And so, um, yeah, I'm like, I'm independent. I don't need anybody help me. If I want to fly somewhere, I'm going to buy the tickets myself. If I want a new pair of shoes, I'm going to buy my shoes myself. You know, like just, just anything. And what that did was place a judgment on me. Okay. Cause these two women, they went on to live their lives and their sense of worth grew. Right. So now they're going to date men who even give them more stuff right because they're setting standards but me i'm over here afraid to admit that i want what they have and so that judgment that i made that it is better to do things yourself and to be independent and not need anybody to do anything for you didn't just carry over into relationships right that wasn't just something um that became a problem when i was dating another guy yet another guy who did not help me um, but it became a problem anytime I actually needed help, um, even outside of relationships. Maybe I needed to borrow money or maybe I needed a ride to work, right? Or anything. Anytime I felt myself getting ready to ask for help, I stopped. I basically said, it's not as good if you don't do it yourself. So that means I had to wipe out all help. Otherwise, I was back in that space of feeling bad again right because it's like oh well how can i judge them for taking help if i'm over here taking help so i created a pedestal off of nothing and then continued to suffer every time that pedestal was being taken out from under me every time i needed help every time i thought i needed help i would be like nope i'm not gonna ask anybody for anything because this is how i lift myself up right and uh, the moment I'm not able to lift myself up that way, I don't feel good. And so um, that's just, that's the reason why we judge, right? We judge to make ourselves feel better about the situation. Now, the funny thing about jealousy is we are usually only jealous of people when we think we can't have something. So if you, let's say somebody's driving a nice car and you want that car if you know that you can buy that car you what you're not gonna be jealous you're gonna be like so he has a nice car if i want that car i'm gonna get that car you know what i mean or if you if a girl has on a nice pair of shoes you're like so if she you know 
good for her. Like, if I want those shoes, I'm going to go get those shoes. And so we're never jealous of things that we know we can have. We're usually only jealous of things that we, um, that we assume that we can't have. How do we judge less? The way we judge less is to become more aware of our insecurities. Do the self-work, right? You have to figure out what triggers you throughout your daily life. You have to become aware of those soft spots um, and realize that when you start to make a judgment, it has more to do with you than them. After you've done the work, after you realize the insecurities, you have to allow yourself to say you want it, right? Flashback to my 19 year old self. If I would have just said, I want that, <laughs> okay? I like this guy. I love this guy. If he can just help me out um, with the bills though, that would be great. Then maybe I wouldn't have ended up with another guy trying to be independent, you know, me trying to be independent who didn't help and think that that was okay because I didn't need him to help me anyway, right? Um, it's just not smart. And so, like I said, it, it's it's going to affect you. It's going to affect your manifesting. My mom has a saying, when you dig a hole for someone else, make sure you dig too because you're going to fall first. That's what judgments are. Because our reality is essentially built on a system of beliefs that we have. Every time you make a new judgment, it's essentially a new belief or new block that can keep you from manifesting something you wanna manifest down the line. I wanted to manifest a partner who would help me, but I created a judgment that was directly keeping me from that thing I wanted. Become more aware by meditating, by questioning yourself, by sitting in deep contemplation and allow yourself to realize whatever it is that you want in the moment and to, uh, and to know that you can have it. It's yours if you want it. It's yours if you want it. Mm -hmm. So that's all the time I have for today, guys. I hope you got something out of that. Um, as always, thanks for watching and see you next week.